one day we'll have intro music, but like, not today. Hi, welcome to Don't Quote Me On That. I'm Kalina. And I'm Eleanor. And this is the show where we kind of talk about movies. Mm -hmm. Except for today. Except for today and every other day. But we're talking about a TV show, which is like... A movie adjacent. Yeah, it's like a long movie or a short movie, depending on how many seasons. And right? it's, and I think the people in the show were in movies, so we're like close oh, enough. Oh, one hundred percent, they are. We're making it. We're like getting there. Yeah. So today we're talking about Friends, although kind of in a roundabout way. We have talked about Friends before on an episode when we were doing the radio show, and if I can find that, maybe we'll pop it up sometime. But also, I just think there's a lot. There's a lot of content on Friends and. We could spend, like, weeks and weeks just talking about, you know, the episodes. So what we did is we took a bunch of quizzes, and we're kind of going to chat, mm-hmm. kind of chat about the quiz results and, like, our unpopular opinions about Friends rather than breaking down the show because... That yeah. would just take forever. Because... And it's more fun. I, I feel like everybody knows Friends. Like, you get um, the gist. Like, even if we sat here... Like, we really don't need to sit here and explain to you the premise of Friends and what happened. No. Basically... There are people, they are friends. Everyone's seen at least one episode. I'm, I'm pretty confident Everyone's, saying that. Yeah. Let's see. Friends started... When did Friends... Friends had ten seasons. Mm-hmm. And it started in... 94. I'm gonna trust Eleanor on uh, these facts. Eleanor's my fact lady, because she usually has the Wikipedia page in front of her. Yes, I do. Um... I know Friends has kind of, like, a really big nostalgia culture around mm-hmm. it, um, and I think it's especially popular in um, Europe, which yeah. is a little bit weird, but I think, you know, the kind of, just it's so different because they're American sort I of think, thing helps. Yeah, I think there's, like, and I think that's part of the reason it's so popular in America, too, because if you think about it, it's not really popular with people who would have watched it when it came mm-hmm. out it's popular with people about our age so i think it just kind of and it's like same vein as like 50 styles diners it's this sense of nostalgia i think people can tap into but they don't like they haven't experienced so they relate to it but not directly if that makes sense mm-hmm. it's a good show. it's not like i i don't want to it's not it's not a great show yeah um and it's definitely like a product of its time in that it is a little bit outdated when it comes to being nice to women and um, people who are fat and people who aren't straight and people who aren't white and I think part of that you can attribute to it was the 90s and people weren't as aware and I also think you know I don't want to say that you can't judge things by today's standards but I do think there needs to be a little bit of a you have to have a little, bit, a little of a bit of a buffer. Yeah. I did yeah. actually write this note. This is for my, like, final thoughts. But I did say that, unfortunately, Friends wasn't... I don't think Friends was bad for its time. Like, I think there's some shows you watch now, and even if you watch them then, you'd kind of be like, oh. Yeah. But I think Friends isn't really that, like... There's a couple times that I, like, I have a hard time watching. But I don't think it's really that out of pocket in like no. even now it's not too far off base like it's not great stuff it's definitely not politically correct or like you know it's not good but it's not really that far out either that's completely unreasonable yeah and it is part of it is like it's a sitcom so it is a little bit hard to handle things completely like as fleshed out as it could with like a drama but also you know like uh I think a lot I'm, more is fair game in a sitcom too. Like you, you do have to have a certain yeah. level of, of like that wall's got to be down when you're watching something that's in, meant meant for comedic purposes. Yeah, there there are a couple things like um, what Phoebe's brother getting with the teacher. Yeah, I think not that's like a little. That. Don't love that. Um, I don't. I hate Ross. Which is just like Anything my he thing. Does is, I, Everything I hate, he does is bad. Like the first season, especially when like his wife, you know, not I want to say becoming a lesbian, but realizing she is a lesbian is like I think that'd be like a major moment in your life. And like I yeah. get poking a joke 
here and there, especially between like maybe Ross, Chandler, and Joey. Maybe them poking fun at him. But like it was like a gag overall of the whole show, and I didn't get that at all. And Ross was like no. Ross was the victim somehow. Yeah, like look, I could understand that it's compl- it's very difficult to leave your wife, especially when you're, or, or, I guess, having your wife leave you, especially when it's a situation where nobody really did anything wrong, and mm-hmm. especially in, in Ross's case, I can imagine he just kind of woke up one day and was like, oh, yeah, like he was everything still in changed love with and her. I wasn't. Yeah, everything yeah. was kind of on her end in that sense. But, like, so that to them, I understand, but, like, everything else was just bad. And also, like, he completely demonized the, um, oh, what's her name? Sue? Carol. Yeah, it was Carol was his wife, so Susan. Yeah, so he completely demonized her, and like, yeah, nobody wants, like, no one want, nobody's expecting you to be best friends with your ex-wife's new wife. But like, also, even if it was your ex-wife's new husband, like, that we understand. Yeah. but like, it's not. The, she's not the villain here. And they had a kid together. Like, Ross just needed to get over himself and put the kid first. Also, in researching this episode, I watched, or I read a bunch of articles, and a lot of them pointed out something that I just hadn't even realized. The, what's this, Ben? The little kid? He Mm -hmm. just gets completely dropped. Yeah. Like, completely. He He is played by the Sprouse Twins, though, and they're adorable. Yes, he is. They're They're so so cute. cute. I love them. They were in that movie Big Daddy with Adam Sandler, and I only know that I don't mm-hmm. like the movie, but it used to come on really late at night, and I'd probably be watching Friends actually flipping through the channels, and I thought mm-hmm. they were adorable. They're just this the cutest little kids. They are so cute. Yeah, no, that's my. I don't think Friends was too bad for its time, but that's our unpopular opinion number one is Eleanor and I do not like Ross. I, yeah, no. I can, mm-hmm. I can, I can kind of like him in the first season. Again, there is th- that whole thing, but for the most part, he's pretty tolerable and not, he's not too out of pocket in the first season, but it just gets worse as time yeah. goes on. Like, I think part of it is when he's, when he's off, he's just so, first of all, he's so annoying about it. Like, for no reason. Yeah, it's not like, he doesn't have like a middle ground. He's either like chill or he's like all the way over there doing something else. So, yeah. yeah. And also, I just think he's annoying. Yeah. Part of that's just because he's a man who was raised thinking that he could do no wrong by his parents, which is, like, the first step of becoming a horrible man, but, you know. Yeah, yeah and it, it makes a little sense when you think, like, he and Monica were the most well-off out of all of them. Like, you think Chandler and Joey, and Chandler and Joey do have their own problems. Wait, but- do you mean, like, mentally or financially? Financially. I thought Rachel was. I'm talking about other boys. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Because, yes, like, you're Chandler right. and Joey's problems, I think, have, a t- like, kind of stick to the same couple of themes. Meanwhile, Ross had an issue with lesbians. He had an issue with um, women, just in general. He had an issue with other men. Like, he just had an issue with everybody. Oh, you know yeah. what I hate? When they were hiring a babysitter and Rachel wanted to hire the male babysitter. And he was so annoying about he that. He was so annoying so about annoying. it. So annoying. Like. And, like, again, it's your kid. If they, if if whoever it is, is gonna treat your kid the best, just yeah. And he was. It wasn't like he was. Not that I'd understand this, but like it wasn't like he was worried something was gonna happen with the babysitter Rachel. His main concern was, oh, that's a woman's job. Yeah, that's and her whole it, um, shtick, dude. Wasn't it Freddie Prince Jr.? Yeah, also Freddie Prince Jr. And like, yeah. Side note: He's gorgeous. He's so cute. <laughs> but yeah, I just. Russ's priorities are just completely whack. And it's not even like the the lesbian wife thing where it's kind of I can see how that can hurt. No, it's just it's it's he just has a guy no who wants sense to watch of boundary. Kid. Like everything's about him all the time. And that's what I was saying. It's between the out of the boys, I think like his background makes sense. He was well off, he was the older brother, his parents treated him wonderfully and i do think the fact that he wasn't popular kind of gave him a complex now that he i don't think he's cool or popular now but he's got a job he makes good money he's respected in his field in that sense so that kind of gives him a platform or like a you know a complex to be on then mm-hmm. anyway. i will say he did have the coolest job well i like no, Rachel's he has the job. coolest job i like Rachel's yeah i was job. thinking rachel too but i think rachel just took a little bit to get there yeah, yeah, to be fair, but I also, I think that that's part of the reason I liked Rachel's job, is you could see her working her way up, and also mm-hmm. after doing my master's, it's, 
like being in an academic space is always like you should check out this paper but also like uh, we have guest lectures and they'll give you all the info and then be like check out this paper i read this paper recently i have zero interest in reading papers every day for the rest of my life i'm so yeah, sorry that's true i like the stuff I'm i just learning. like dinosaurs yeah and like i feel like and like i remember one episode i think they went to a conference and he brought them all along so like i could only do that so many times before i got bored but dinosaurs are cool yeah so the first quiz we took was about what friends like side character i guess like underrated what obscure yeah. character although which i think just means not one of them yeah insects, i, was gonna say, I really. don't think my character what i got was obscure and my notes for this quiz was i didn't love the result but also like i don't hate it, it kind of makes sense you go first though yeah oh me first uh, yeah, mine was, I I don't like it, but it does kind of make sense. I got Janice. Really? I love Janice. Yeah, yep. Janice is definitely not obscure. If anyone knows any other character besides, like, some people know Janice before they know the other six. Yeah. I, I'd say, like, Janice and Gunther. Yeah. You can't call those bits. Mm -mm. Anyway. Yeah, it says, uh, you literally just pop up anywhere and everywhere. A lovable rogue, if I ever did see one. People are always excited to see you, even if you are a bit jarring every now and then. But hey, you're nothing if not consistent. And I think that's very true, because I am everywhere, and you cannot get rid of me, and sometimes you hate it. Yeah, I wasn't going to agree, but after that description, I wouldn't, I don't, jarring is a good word, it doesn't sound great, but like... No, it's true. Yeah, not true. No, that's not that's not too bad. I got um, I got Richard Burke, which was the old guy that Monica dated. Tom Selleck. Yeah, and it says a person of class in the highest form. You just ooze sophistication and are oh so suave. You've been unlucky in love a few times, but with such confidence and charm, you'll be snapped up in no time. Just divine. Well done, you. And like, I don't think I'm that cool, but like, I like to pretend I'm that cool. No, but I I, I do get you know. You got your life together vibes, which are kind of the main, the main draw of uh, he was Richard. Stable. You so. can trust him. So yeah, I got it. He was cute. He yeah, Tom Selleck is kind of adorable. Well, we're not gonna get into that. My grandma's that. in love with him. <laughs> My mom's in love with him. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I wasn't too mad about that. Um, I didn't have any thoughts on the quiz itself because you know sometimes. And Eleanor and I have done enough quizzes that, like, after a while, you can't... You, there's only so many BuzzFeed quizzes you can take, so we've been on all sorts of random websites and, like... Yeah, I, I was the one looking for the quizzes, and I was on, like, page six of Google, and I was like, at this point, these are just BuzzFeed. Yeah, or, like, some of them... And then some of them are just so, like, obvious. Yeah. It's like, what job do you want to have? Paleontology. And I'm like, that's just, like, clear what I'm going to get there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> crazy yeah. yeah some of the buzzfeed quizzes were a little bit i was looking for like you know those ones that are like what's your vibe but all the questions are just have nothing to do with anything the questions are like pick a car oh, yeah, it's like build a sandwich pick a celebrity and I'll tell who you i think is yeah. gay yeah those ones are fun yeah i was looking for those but the website is is a little bit difficult to manage or not navigate mm -hmm. So I was not successful, but I, I think I found a nice, most of them are still from BuzzFeed, but I do think I found a nice. Yeah, I only had like neat notes on like the actual quizzes themselves for a couple of them, so. Yeah. Okay, which one do you want to do next? Because I don't think I sent them in Okay, order. the one I have next is which is your soulmate. So um, while Eleanor's getting that pulled up, I, I will give you my thoughts on this one before I give you my result. So first I thought this one, the ones where the questions were like way too obvious. And the answer I got felt, based on the description of the character, felt more like which character are you, not which character is your soulmate. Because I think the person they gave me is someone who's like identical to me description wise. And I don't think I'd want it like you wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be with someone identical to me. So it would have made more sense if I got put with this person's partner, I think. Okay. Have you got it? Uh, the BuzzFeed one, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, then yes, I got it. Okay, I'll go first this time. My result was Monica E. Geller-Bing. And um, the reason I thought this was more which character is you is because it talks about how, well, well, this got some little fun facts at the end. So Monica apparently has the first line in the first episode, which is there's nothing to tell. And she has the final line in the last episode, which is we've got some time. She has been known to clean, this is where I think it's me. She's been known to clean in her sleep. 
um, she swaps her dream wedding dress with a fellow bride in return for the bride letting him have her booking for the Swing Kings, which is Chandler's dream band. And she became a chef because Chandler told her he liked his, her mac and cheese. Now, I think I'm more like Monica. I'd like to be Chandler, but I do think I'm like Monica in the sense that I am a little bit of a neat freak. And yeah. I do try to have my stuff together, my life together, and I do think Monica makes effort. And I do think out of, especially out of the girl, actually, you know what, I'll give her out of all six of them. She's probably the most on track and the most uh, normal, I would say. Like, she could, she probably yeah. have friends outside of the friend group. I don't think the rest of them could make me manage it. Maybe Rachel. Um... But yeah, I think I think it would have made more sense then for me to end up with Chandler in that sense. Yeah, yeah, that's I, I remember when I took this quiz, a lot of the I think every single friends quiz has a what's your favorite food option? And this one, one of the answers was just meat. And like, if you get meat, you're, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Some, and but that's like on some of them. I like only had two choices. One was like pepperoni pizza, meat. And I was like, huh, I wonder what I'll pick. <laughs> so, and yeah, also I couldn't um, be with someone like Monica. I just know myself. No, I got, um, Joey. Really? Which, <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't think I'm, well, I think I'm a little bit like Joey in the sense that everybody is, but I think I could not do that. I don't think I could do that. There's just way too much going on there. I think... Um, no, you go ahead. Also, yours has a bunch of little, like, fun facts. Mine only has one, and I think it just cropped weird because I took it on my phone. And it just says, during the series, Joey hooks up with 51 different women. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's a fun fact. I mean, well, that's important information. Yeah, no, I scrolled down to make sure I got all of mine because I thought they were... Because some of them I didn't know. Like, I didn't know Monica became a chef because Chandler said he liked her mac and cheese. I didn't, I didn't sound right. I I remember that. I think, yeah, I do remember mm -hmm. that. I think it was at a Thanksgiving, one of the first times they met, even okay. though... Also, the timeline for Friends, so skewed. Like, I completely get that after 10 seasons, you're not going to remember every single minuscule detail. And I'm sure they didn't um, anticipate becoming the kind of cult classic although i don't think you can call it a cult classic just because everybody likes it universally beloved i don't think they uh realize they'd become as popular as they are and have people like picking apart each mm -hmm. thing but you can't have people meet six different times i'm pretty sure what chandler and rachel met for the first time like three or four times yeah they like they kept discovering i think one time they met like the 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 whatever central perk was before it became central perk um, I think they met there. They also met at some party where there was that mix up with um, like some college party Ross and Chandler had gone to. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think they met at Monica's house when. Yeah, when they went over for. I think it was Thanksgiving they came home for. Yeah. And like, I think sometimes that can work if it was played off as a. Or like sometimes when shows are set in the past. Um, like one one show I watched is set in 1980 and the narrator always starts was with you know it was 1980 something so they're giving themselves you know a pillow of yeah you know, obviously this is being told in the future so things are gonna get wrong but things are gonna be you know confused and things are gonna be wrong but friends like didn't have that and again it's a sitcom you, you, you can't expect everything from it but I feel like that's basic and then I think it was Ross has like three different birthdays. Come on, write it down somewhere. <laughs> one of you, like out of all of you, one of you should know that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I would say if anything, I was more like Monica. That was my only, that was my main complaint. We actually, I think we should do this one next if you can find it. We uh, did one of what girl are you, Rachel, Phoebe, or Monica? Girl, I got this pulled up in order. Give me two seconds. We can do the one you have in order. That's easiest. No, I'll find it. Okay, I got it. Okay. Um. Um. Also, real quick, I. We did two that were which one are you, and I got the same character for both, which. Is, interesting. I have the opposite and also, problem. Is I've gotten the, I got a different answer every time I took one of these quizzes. Like regardless of the I premise. Got, I got the same answer for 
which girl are you and then which person are you. But my issue is I don't think it's even <laughs> anywhere near anything. All right, well, you got to go first this time. Okay, so for this one, for are you Rachel, Phoebe, or Monica, I got Monica. Yeah, no. Well, you've established no. I'm the Monica. Like, I think this is kind of what you were talking about in the sense that uh, – I, I think it's right in that I would go for somebody like Chandler. Mm -hmm. um, what's well? What's but, the description? Because I don't agree with mine, but the description they gave, I do agree with. If that makes sense, uh, it does. But I, so it's you would go thousands of miles to make your loved ones happy. You help everyone around you, which makes you such a sweetheart. You love keeping things organized because it makes life easier. Being surrounded by your friends and family is what keeps you moving. Oh, yeah. No. Not, well, I think I would go thousands of miles to make my loved ones happy. Um, but only in that I would move to Ireland so that we weren't annoyed by each other <laughs> by having to live in the same house. <laughs> yeah, that's not, uh, could be more accurate is what I will say. I don't think anybody <laughs> would look me in the face and say that I help everyone around me. I think I can be helpful. You can be helpful, yes. Um, I'm only helpful to the people that I like, and even that changes. Mm -hmm. Well, my answer was Phoebe, but the description is you're the chillest person in the room. You stand tall in your beliefs and are very caring, but you can be tough when things get out of hand. You care about what's important instead of going after pointless things. People love hanging out with you. And until the last sentence, I'm like, I think that was pretty spot on, but like, I wouldn't identify with Phoebe usually. I like hanging out with you. Yeah, people is plural. And unfortunately, <laughs> you are only one woman. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Reading the description, yeah. But I think um, that they were a little bit cherry picky because you can't you can't just say that about Phoebe and then ignore the... She loves uh, cookie? The, the, and yeah, the, the cookiness. And the cat song the, and the all of it. Uh, yeah, well, I mean... Look, I'm not to air out your dirty laundry on the internet, you do have a song about soup. I do have a... Well, th yes. That's not dirty laundry. I'm very proud of my soup song. It's just everyone else thinks it's stupid, but I think it's a great song. <laughs> okay, and um, what friend's character do you think would say that, Phoebe? Joey Tribbiani. Thank case. you very much. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> His song would be about meat, but like, it, same, like, same thing. You got, yeah, no, you got me there. I walked into that one. My thoughts on this quiz were I had no complaints and it was short. That was it. This song, yeah, this one was really short. It was easy enough. It was good. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. Like, I'm not, I'm kind of glad I didn't get Monica because I don't think I'm that bad. But, like, I'm surprised I didn't get Monica. Yeah, well... I don't know. I, I, I like the description. I yeah, don't think either is. of us are Rachel-y. No. The description... Yeah. I was thinking that. Like, I was thinking out of all the girls, who would I identify with most? And it can probably be Monica. Um, but out of all of them, I don't really think I identify with any of the girls. Like, the Monica thing is mostly she's a bit of a neat freak. And that's, uh, you know, a little yeah. bit obsessive. So that's what I identify with. But I, I do think the whole Phoebe's whole go with the flow thing, that's very yeah. Kalina. Um, also, I will go first on this one because Kalina has to find it because I decided we were going to go out of order just to mess with her. Um, this one is titled, This Quiz Will reveal, reveal Which Friends Character You're Like, But Only If You Answer These Questions Honestly. Pick a better title. Pick a title that isn't, you know, 30 words long. Um, I already said that I got the same character. I got Monica. Um, still don't agree. Um, it says, you're energetic, no, strong, no, intelligent, depending on the day. Your friends often describe you as the mother of the group because you know how to lend a helping hand and take care of... My phone fell. Oh, okay. What? Um, actually, well... Okay, camera angle's definitely still the same. Thanks. Anyway, the quiz we're doing is, uh, which friends character are you like, but only if you answer these questions honestly, which I agree. Get a better title. Yeah, also, get, get better questions. 
Yeah, um, okay, my notes on this quiz are bad, bad, bad answer, good number of questions. I don't know how I've gotten a different answer any every time, and then the rest relate to my answer, so well, I'll go first. I think it's my turn. So I got Ross. I took this quiz twice and I got Ross. Stop falling. Uh, yeah, I took this quiz twice and I got Ross both times, and the description is right, like Ross, you are smart, caring, and love being right, which... I agree with two of those things. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy spending time with your friends, helping others, and making people smile when they are feeling down. I would agree, except I don't think Ross does any of those things. You can be shy and awkward yeah. at times, but once you open up to people, you are truly your best self, which I agree with. My notes on this is, I would not call Ross caring unless it suits him. Yeah, I means. would also be very scared if at any point on the show, Ross was his best self. Because... Yeah. Like I said, season one was best Ross, and then it, it didn't, like, go down gradually. It was a sharp, sharp decline after that. Um, um, also, just real quick, the first question of this quiz was which of these hobbies do you like the most? And one of them was just cleaning. I was tempted to put that just for, just for fun, but I didn't. I think I put reading. That was an option. I don't remember what I said. I think I said going shopping, which, embarrassing. Anyway, yeah, I got Monica, like I said, I got the same thing for both of these. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I should have gotten Rachel. especially. So, on the, like, the what hobby do you like? I said going shopping. The which one would you have a pet, which animal would you have as a pet? I said hairless cat. Um, and those are true. And guess who those, those are obviously, like, Rachel-coded answers. So, um... um I did think it was really funny. They had a movie genre question, and one of the answers was just documentary. Yeah. Um, I, I know part of the reason I got this answer is because I put reading, and then I said that I wanted a monkey, and this is only because it specified hairless cat, and I would take a monkey over a hairless cat. But, like, if it said cats in general, that would have been my answer. But all my other answers I don't think were Ross-like at all. But I don't think I'm Ross-like at all. So it was a little You take a hairless answers. cat or a monkey over a dog? Yeah, you've ever seen those? Uh, oh, God, I can't remember what they're called now. I'm going to look it up. Uh, a spider monkey? Uh, they're so cute. I want a spider okay. monkey. Okay. I just, I feel like they'd be too hard to keep track of. It'd be so fun, though. I I, I agree, but, like, I'd take that, yeah. I, I, because it said monkey and didn't specify what kind, yeah, I would take a monkey. Okay, all right. Cat. Again, if it was cats oh. in general, that would be my thing. <laughs> I'm a little bit different. If it had just said cat, I wouldn't have picked it. I would have picked dog. But it said hairless cat, and I was like, I, I really want a hairless cat. Yeah. Not that I don't like hairless cats, but between that and a monkey, monkey is it? Yeah. So anyway, doesn't like that bad quiz. Bad quiz. <laughs> no. Okay. The next quiz, and I think I'm, yeah, I'm sticking with Kalina's order, so it should be just the next one in line is what would your job be in the Friends universe? Um, this quiz was fine, I guess. Um, this one is, I got Ross, but then I retook it. <laughs> oh, I just, actually, I, I did like these answers, these, the, this quiz, it was short, but the song, the, the questions weren't obvious. Which is why I was surprised I got Ross. <laughs> I got Monica again. Well, sorry, I got Monica's job. Um, when I retook it, I got Rachel. So Rachel's turned fashion executive, which I think makes a lot more sense for me as a person. Not necessarily. Oh, I got. Part, but. I got chef and rest. I think that's supposed to be restaurant tour, but it says restaurant tour. <laughs> I don't have spell check on those feet. No. Um, yeah, I liked my answer because I think I think going from like a simple, pretty normal run of the mill job to like a creative job, I think made a lot more sense for me. Like I wouldn't I like dinosaurs or I like academic y stuff, but I wouldn't necessarily like work in a museum or someplace where I'm immersed in that all the time. Yeah. Um I I couldn't work in a restaurant. I can barely cook for myself. 
I like being in charge of things, but I don't like being in charge of things and then also part of my job is that people get to tell me if I'm doing a bad job. Um, also, I don't have... I don't have any... <laughs> I don't have any knife skills. That's probably for the best. I have knife skills. You have to look at me, Elena. Why do you have a knife? <laughs> it's a letter opener. I had to fix my headphones. Don't ask how I fix my headphones with a knife. I, no, I don't want to know, actually. Um, anyway, yeah, I didn't have any, well, besides the raw stick, I didn't have any complaints. <laughs> I didn't even read the description. Um, it might have helped, but I don't think so. No, my, if it's anything like the description for mine, it's just, wow, you really would be a waitress. And then after you're done being a waitress, you would go <laughs> to get a job that pays more. That's exactly what mine says. And then you work <laughs> at Bloomingdale's and then you'd work your way up the corporate ladder. And I'm like, yeah, no, I saw the show. <laughs> uh, I think uh, the next quiz is my favorite quiz. Yeah, it is. It's... I think it's fairly recent. It came out this year, which yeah. part of me is surprised that people are still churning out Friends content in twenty twenty one. Being the bottom of the barrel for Friends content, honestly, it's but it was both a, of our favorites. Yeah, it's everyone has a Friends pet that matches their vibe. Which one is yours? And I got um, Chandler and Joey's duck. You are spontaneous hey! and loyal, just like everyone's favorite long neck bird. Me too. Yeah, which Look is the that. only right answer. Yeah. I, want I think... Monkey. I don't want to, um... I don't want that to be my answer. I think looking at the questions, it would make a lot of sense that Kalina and I got the same... The same thing. No, it wouldn't. What's the first question? Well, the first question is, how would you describe yourself? Cheeky, sweet, charming, or caring? What did you say? I think I said cheeky. I don't think I'm charming, but people, um, I, I do, people do like me. If you need someone to present something, I'm your woman. Mm-hmm. And Father Wall at Mary I did tell me I know how to work a crowd. Yeah, you do know how to work a crowd. It's, it's impressive. Wait, okay, what did you say for what would be your ideal pet? Rabbit, snake, gerbil, or pig? Rabbit. Oh, I said pig. Yes, I figured you would. <laughs> I thought about saying snake. And then I thought about pig, but my brother wants a pig. Um, so I, I just think having a first. pig would be fun. We used to have rabbits. I like them. I had a rabbit once. Her name was Miss Kitty. I didn't name her. Okay. I fully support the name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I didn't name her. Yeah, no, I, I had, my brother had a white rabbit and I had a black rabbit. And they were, they were sweet. They're kind of like cats, but uh, they hop. And my they rabbit... Just, did, kind of poop everywhere which is not great no we trained them to use a litter box though i think so too bad. oh they weren't like super on it but like nine times out of ten they were pretty good good for them and yeah that was my favorite one i love chandler and joey's duck i thought that was a hilarious storyline yeah oh uh, my favorite chandler and joey adventure though is um when they i think they take i must be ross and rachel's baby and then they lose the baby on the bus <laughs> That's the best Chandler and Joey scene ever. And then they go to the with the bus terminal and they're trying to decide which baby's right and they're like rock, paper, scissoring for it. <laughs> That's so good. And then I'm pretty sure they only know it's uh, Emma because Monica picks it up and she starts crying, the, the baby. Oh, I wasn't sure if they ever figured out which baby was right. I thought they just said, okay. <laughs> oh, no, you're right. I... Maybe they go to change the diaper and it's got the wrong equipment and Ross is like I... Maybe, yeah, no. I, I thought Maybe? they never I thought they never figured it out, which I thought was the funniest part of the whole thing, is they just said, Hope so. Uh, yeah. I think about that with twins a lot, is like I think it's probably impossible to keep track of twins. So I think at yeah. a certain point I think like by the time you're old enough to be registered for things then you obviously have to be happy. By then you probably have the name on point, but I have no doubt in my mind there's twins out there who were named one thing and got switched up at some point. It's I think bad. there's a Zach and Cody episode about that. Yeah. Where they decide that they got switched at birth and then live the life of the other person. Yeah. But also, I don't think your name has that much of an effect on you. 
Not, yeah, especially not when you're little like that. Like, I'm talking about by the time they figure out who's who, and you're, like I said, like, registered for school and things like that, by then you'd have enough of a personality, you'd be responding to your name. But when you're a baby, it doesn't make that big of a difference. One, look, there's one, there's two of you, whatever. I think if I had twins, I would have to, like, tattoo the bottom of a foot of one of them. Just so I don't get confused. Or not, maybe not tattoo, but, like, you know, expo marker. Yeah, I think some people give them, like, a little bracelet or something. Color code them. Yeah. Nope, I'm leaving that in God's hands. <laughs> I also don't think I could handle having twins, because that's just a lot of... Oh, yes, I don't want any children, so I'm leaving everything in oh, God's hands. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, the next two I think we took weren't quizzes, but I think I liked them the best. Um, okay. And I'm going to go through... I want to do the outfit one first. Actually, no. Let's do the... the we did one on like, it wasn't a quiz, but there was a long BuzzFeed article about TV shows with the worst endings and Friends was on there. And um, it was when Rachel got off the plane and gave up her dream job to be with Ross. Yeah. Ross. Which, yeah. Like, first of all, don't give your dream, up, dream job up for anyone. I don't care if you all are like married and got 50 children. Don't yeah. give up your dream job, okay? Second, don't give your dream job up for Ross. No. Also, what was she going to do with the kid? What were they going to do with the kid? You can't give your characters a kid and then just take it away when you decide it's not funny anymore. Yeah, I don't like that one at all. I did I kind, of, kind of a little bit related. Yeah, I didn't like this ending, but I, I did kind of like how everybody, all the women and friends became mothers in different ways. And I think that's something that friends could have really messed up. But, you know, yeah. Monica adopted and Phoebe was just a surrogate mother. Well, not just, but, you know, Phoebe was a surrogate mother and Rachel had a baby out of wedlock. And I think yeah. they treated kind of all of those as... Equally. I, I think, yeah, yeah, I don't think... It was one of the few things they didn't make light of. Although I will mm -hmm. say... One of the things I saw, and this is one of the articles we read, is about like serious subjects and how they were mishandled in Friends. And one of them was kind of remember when Phoebe had the triplets and then she wanted to keep one of them, and that wasn't handled very well because they kind of like no. just, they kind of moved on, you know. And like that was a big thing from her. Like she carried, you know, I mean, and even in real life, you carry someone for something for nine months, like yeah. And even if it's like obviously it's a pre-arranged like surrogacy agreement, I feel like that's yeah. gotta have a grief period for it i think so, yeah like, but yeah i and i also appreciate in friends and i think this would have been better if ross and rachel had it ended up together because partly because well mostly because it didn't make any sense and two because i like how they didn't pair them all off with each other yeah i did like that and like to be fair it was just phoebe and joey but i think it would have been very easy for them to put the two of them together because they're both a little goofy and you know they, they would have it would have made some sense but like i'm glad they they didn't go that route also Paul yeah was adorable so um i think i re i think rachel and joey should have ended up together oh rachel and joey 100 this is my unpopular opinion this is my number one unpopular like, opinion about friends rachel and joey first of all joey is the superior man just yeah in general like i love chandler to bits and pieces but like personally joey's my man and rachel and joey just made sense because and I hate saying, uh, it kind of sounds like Rachel's, like, mothering him almost, but, like, Rachel was, I was very put together. She knew what she was doing with her life. She was well off financially, technically, and she was working, and I think in the same sense, she and Joey both had a sense of working their way up in their fields, you know what I mean? Obviously mm -hmm. in very different spheres. And, like, Rachel, even when they were just friends, Rachel went to award ceremonies with him, and she was like, okay, did you practice your graceful loser face? And they did cute little things like that, and he, like, I think he was a little in love with her when he started doing this, but remember when she moved in with him and he like made space for the baby and he gave up his favorite stuffed animal for the baby? Joey was just the, the best man. Yeah. But also, I... sorry, uh, just real quick, one of the serious subjects we'll talk about later is Joey being a womanizer, and I have some thoughts on like the dichotomy of those two two Joeys. Mm-hmm. You can, you can say them now, we'll be moving on to that next. Oh, I, well, it was talking about how Joey had women, um, is a womanizer and how that wasn't handled very well and kind of treated as a joke. But I also felt like 
at the same time there was another Joey who was the butt of like the majority of the gay jokes they made about the guys on the show it was mostly Joey like there yeah was like the the plucking the eyebrows thing and yeah there was an episode where he was carrying a purse he did that commercial for lipstick and like things and then like even if it was him and then there was sometimes there was jokes like him and Chandler like when they had the baby on the bus and the people thought they were a couple but it was usually it was usually Joey so I thought that was it was it might have been a conscious yeah. effort, but that they, they, they put all of that on the man who was also supposed to be the ladies' man. Yeah, and, like, I don't, th like, yeah, I think there were a couple instances where Joey was a little bit creepy. Yeah. But also, what is a womanizer? As long as, you know, the ladies that you're womanizing... <laughs> They what? seem to, yeah, it didn't seem, like, one-sided most of the time. Yeah, and it's not like, um, what's the show, How I Met Your Mother, like, the, the womanizer character on that, part of his thing is that he lies and tricks and deceives to get women to sleep with him. Joey's just, like... Jo Joey's kind of quite literally take me as I am, and partly is he's too stupid to put up a front of, I'm not doing this. But also, I think part of, like, another thing I think is because he was... The reason he was so successful at Ladies and Such a Womanizer was also the reason he got made fun of is because he was willing to be in touch with that side of himself and mm -hmm. he was very upfront about who he was as a person. Because even when they were like, that's not, that's a purse, he was like, no, it's a man bag and he moved, like, he moved on. That was mm -hmm. his, and he had no qualms I mean, about saying what he felt. Joey had like, what, 10 sisters or I something. I was going to say that he also had a lot yeah, of Yeah, which so. definitely tied into that. I think. Yeah, I think that's a good thing that you bring up that I didn't think about before, because I think if you're a man raised around a bunch of women, it's easier to be in touch with your emotions, just because yeah. there's not kind of that societal block that you'd have if you were raised around a bunch of men who were like, I, I don't have feelings, thank you, goodbye. A bit of a personal example, my brother is the most polite young man you'll ever meet, and it's mostly because in the house it's me and my mom. Like, my dad is here. But my dad works outside of the house, whereas my mom works from home. I'm from home doing mm -hmm. school, obviously. So my brother's in the house with the two of us all the time. And he is more... He is a very polite young man. <laughs> like, yeah. he started off in touch with his emotions, and then he was raised with two women, which I don't think were super emotional, but it definitely helped him out. Yeah. So, yeah, have not have not He's he a very nice boy. He is. I love him. And I also think that... Um, Kind of, I know the couple episodes with Joey's sisters, he was very protective of them. And mm -hmm. I think there's that dynamic with him and Rachel, the protectiveness a little bit more than anybody else. But it's also because they have the most storylines together. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the, another thing I just thought of was when he, when he stopped eating meat during. Oh yeah, when Phoebe was pregnant. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, he said he stopped eating meat to make up for her eating meat because it would balance out. And we all know Joey loves his meat. And then, what was I thinking? Oh, also when they found out, um, when he found out his dad was cheating on his mom, and he was so concerned with his mom, like he was reading his dad his rights. He's like, how could you do that to her? Da 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 da. So like, he has values. I do think, I, I think the womanizer aspect was, was a gag, but I do think he was a ladies man. I do think there's a bit of a distinction between the two. Yeah, and there were, what, like, the one on this article is talking about how um, he took the, the shower curtain off in the apartment for mm -hmm. safety, and I, that's one yeah. of the things where it's, where it's obviously a joke, because nobody would do that in real life, and also... And it wasn't like he was, like, they never made jokes about him, like, necessarily peeping in on this lady when he took the shower yeah. curtain off, which I think would have taken it to another level. And also one thing, the reason I came up with this is because in that article, it was like point three was Joey's a womanizer. And then like point seven was like, they make a lot of gay jokes. And Joey was the example. And every time I thought of another example, it was him. Mm -hmm. But also uh, one thing I see a lot online is when people are like in support of Joey and Rachel ending up together is when they, I think they kissed in Barbados the first time. And he was like, oh my God, I'm kissing Rachel Green. Whereas Ross kind of acted like he deserved to kiss Rachel Green, which is a whole other thing. Okay, if anyone yeah. was a sucky person around women, it was Ross. Which doesn't yeah. make sense, because he also had a sister and a mother. But anyway. Yeah, but Ross also didn't have any respect, which, fair enough, um, fair enough, fair enough. main issue. Main, major point there. 
<laughs> so yeah. Anyway, I have a lot of thoughts about Joey. I think he's a wonderful character, and I think if they made the show now, he definitely would have been more fleshed out. And I yeah. definitely think Ross would have probably been cut out after like season one or two. Yeah, I don't think anybody would have liked Ross. No. Um, also, so, uh, in this article, a lot of the a couple of the points are about um, Phoebe and how like they were making making jokes or like making light of her experience you know as a homeless person and uh yeah. how she was joking about her mother killing herself and i think it's okay because phoebe made those jokes yeah i think it would be different if everybody else constantly made those jokes but phoebe made those jokes and in a lot of instances that i can remember even the, the people she was making the jokes to were like are you 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 good yeah and i think like that's different I was thinking that about the homelessness one because it wasn't ever like she was talking about the plights of being homeless. It wasn't like, oh, it was really hard to find food and, you know, clothing and shelter. She was making jokes about stabbing a cop, I think, which is like, has, has nothing to do with the day-to-day -day plight of being a homeless person. And again, yeah, she yeah. was making those jokes. And I think they were few and far between enough. I don't think it was a... Like, I think they made jokes about her mother, but her mother's suicide specifically, I don't think was like a running gag. No. And then she had the whole uh, story of finding her real mom? Something like that? Yeah. So it's not, it's not like they were just treated as jokes and she was never given kind of a serious moment where she came to terms with it. Yeah. One thing, I think for the most part the show does, and it could, it could obviously have done it better, but I do think it gives the characters a chance to confront the things they're making jokes of i don't think they always give them a resolution necessarily but it's not like they make the joke and then kind of drop the subject mm -hmm. like D chandler makes jokes about his dad and then in later seasons you see his dad which is another thing that popped up on this and i saw i think we looked up two articles and one was talking about how his dad was actually a transgender woman and the one said he, he was just a drag queen so i'm not entirely sure what the actual consensus yeah is. i don't think there was kind of supposed to be one and it's also kind of like queen. yeah me too because that's kind of how he was presented yeah. and, he, like, and also a drag show i think mm -hmm. I to see him. if i i have i don't remember any of the episodes with chandler's dad at all it would be one thing if um his dad was like I, I'm a I'm a lady now, mm -hmm. and then Chandler was like, "Nope, uh, no, Dad's different." But yeah, and again, back to what we were saying before, Chandler was usually the one making the jokes, partly because the other people had met his father, and I think I think that makes sense for Chandler as a character because he's very sarcastic, and mm -hmm. I think his father, I think your parent doing that, which is no, is not bad, and like no, no comment on you or them. But that is a hard thing to go through. Like, even if your just parents split up normally, that'd be a yeah, hard thing to go through. I think, what, his dad cheated on his mom with a pool boy or something, and then... yeah, he, It was kind of one thing on top of the other for him, and he was young enough, it makes sense, his coping mechanism is to make jokes about it. Yeah. And kind of avoid the situation. Mm -hmm. Which, and that's, yeah, that's what Chandler does with everything. So I think... And make, like I said, it makes sense for him as a character yeah. and for the situation he was in. My final note on this quiz is Ross still sucks. Oh, yeah. There could be just... The whole, the whole half of Ross. these things are just... And then Ross does this, yeah. I... Sorry, I was like, I'm looking at the comments on this article. And one of them... Oh, let me find it again. Uh, other things that should be on this list... Uh, Phoebe sang Smelly Cat, and that's cat phobia, and Monica was a chef and never made any vegan food. That's problematic, and sure, uh, obviously, like, this person's making a joke, I hope, but, like... Uh, <laughs> she was made in the 90s. Like, we can, as, as, as much as, like Eleanor said, you, you can't judge everything by today's standards, and you have to no matter how if you're being critical of a piece of media you have to keep the, the context in mind yeah oh, i learned that in my media class okay that is academic is backed up by people you have to keep the context in mind because context gives the meaning to everything yeah 
and yeah it's the late 90s oh sorry just completely 180 if that's all right I, I kind of liked that the show didn't put 9-11 into the show mm -hmm. uh, because I think it's kind of like, obviously these two situations are completely different. Okay. So just before I say that completely different situations, but a little bit, a little bit of similarity of, of my point at the end. So stick with me. Um, it kind of reminds me now that shows are starting to get back after COVID and some of them are just completely ignoring the pandemic and some are just like skipping a year and be like, oh, okay, everything's normal now. I think um, that kind of, it, it kind of works for shows like lighthearted shows like this that are yeah. kind of used as escapism. And uh, I know I appreciate the shows that are just now coming out that are ignoring it and being like, yeah, sure, that's happening in real life, but it's not happening here. So let's, you know, mm -hmm. rally here. Um, but I did like, I saw, I don't think it was an article I sent you because I don't remember when I wrote it or read it, but they did, they wore a bunch of like FDNY gear, F, yeah, FDNY gear and all that kind of in the the season surrounding it. So I thought, yeah. I thought that was nice. And I, I, appre I'm also very much a TV is an escape mechanism. So. And it, but, it, like, regardless of the format, I don't think it's fair if every single show does that. Because even if TV isn't, like, primarily an escapism for you, you're dealing with that in real life. So there's no point in turning on the TV. Yeah. Like, you're not watching something if you're you're not trying to watch your own life you know or you wouldn't need to yeah. have tv on so yeah no that's a good point i didn't i didn't even think about that yeah i and it also like wouldn't have fit the tone of the show not that you know you know anyone could have predicted that and it's you know the, the I main think it would have taken too long to to have the have an arc with that you know what i mean mm -hmm. You couldn't you couldn't resolve that simply or neatly yeah and I, I do think it's nice that they still kind of worked around it and you know put the the mm -hmm. subtle support in it yeah, I also at the time you would recognize that yeah I also liked um, I might be misremembering but apparently all of the like the six main actors got paid the same throughout oh that's good I think I think that's true. Don't quote us on that. Don't quote us on that. But I'm gonna look it up. Seeing if I have any more notes here for you folks. Oh yeah, I said um, Joey was simultaneously woke and not woke at the same time. <laughs> which I don't know how you can write a character like that, but they did it to him. Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, they did... After a couple seasons... They, two of the actors, um, Aniston and Schwimmer, so um, Ross and Rachel, they actually took a pay cut so that everybody else could get paid the same. Oh, that's so, you know, I, I like that. I think that's that's really nice. Oh, yes. Look, I like David Schwimmer. That man plays the giraffe in Madagascar. And he's he the does? Giraffe. Yeah. He's the giraffe in Madagascar. And he also played Rob Kardashian in The People vs. O.J. Simpson, which is a really good show, and you should check it out. And I thought he was genius. I just don't like Ross. But that's not his fault. Oh, yeah, no, Ross just sucks. Ross is, um, he also, there's a lot of um, similarities between uh, Ross and the main guy from How I Met Your Mother, I which is true. also, like, partly because that show started, I think, the same year Friends ended, so it kind of, like, wanted to be the the friends. the next friends but yeah. did it wrong i like that show i watched I, it and thought i liked it and now i don't remember anything that happened and i hate that guy and I don't yeah i don't like the guy and Bad i ending. i think horrible ending i think it, it needs even more of a degree of uh i think they're friends if friends took everything just a bit too far like they just pushed yeah it. i liked robin i think that's i like that's about it yeah I just think, I'm trying I just to think, think of a like, phrase 
Did it's like see? extended reality, but it's not. Um, oh God. Something of disbelief. Kalina, what is it? Please help me out. I don't know. Why? Well, oh God. It's going it's to hurt my feelings. Disbelief? Yeah. Suspension of disbelief. Right? Oh God. Anyway, I need to like, I, there's a lot, there's a little bit of mental padding that I need to do to watch friends and put myself in, you know, re remember the context of it. There's even more with how I met your mother, which I feel like shouldn't be the case because it's so much old. Well, not so much, but it's, it's older, but yeah, friends, I can, friends, I can pop. That's another thing I like about friends. You can pop it on at any time. Like I know what, Nickelodeon I like format. Like, didn't they used to, like, freeze a lot and do alternates? Mm -hmm. I just didn't like the format. I thought the sets were bad. <clears throat> I just did not like that show. Now that I'm thinking about it, it was a bad show. <laughs> it, it wasn't great, but I do like it. Please feel free to um, attack me for my opinion. It's, it's my unpopular opinion episode. How I Met Your Mother is a bad show. Neil Patrick Harris is funny, though. Not Neil Patrick Harris. Show, just in general. Oh. Well, I liked him in the show. I, I did don't... First know if I like him in real life. I've, oh, I've heard a couple stories that are like... Mm. Oh, I haven't heard any stories, but I did watch his Architectural Digest video. And he's got like a magic room in his house. I can't explain uh, it. Watch it if you've seen the Architectural <laughs> Digest video. You know what I'm talking about. I do think he and his husband and his kids are cute. And he, um, and he hosts... What's the musical theater one? The Tonys? I think so. Tony's. And he also has fun songs for that. One time he pretended to be in an Irish bar singing a song, and I love me an Irish bar. Like, nobody's business. That's true. Um, I will say I did not like him as Count Olaf. Yeah, my mom and my brother watched that, and I'm trying to decide if I want to watch it because they said it was good, but it was hard to well, take him wait, seriously as Count Olaf. Yeah. The TV show, I think it's good. The only complaint I have is that he's Count Olaf. I just, his, the look is really good. His acting is really good. I just can't get over his voice as Count Olaf. I think the Jim Carrey Count Olaf is so much better. Jim Carrey anything is better, just. I'm pretty sure that's the only Jim Carrey movie I've ever seen. Okay, have you seen How the Grinch Stole Christmas? The I don't think so. One? Oh, okay. Well, Jim Carrey Grinch is the only Grinch that has rights. <laughs> okay. Animated Grinch is okay, but like, Jim Carrey's the man. Oh, I watched uh, Jim Carrey in this movie, I think it was called 23, and this man kind of goes crazy, um, and he keeps seeing the number 23, which is apparently an important number, and it kind of goes in line with like the White Lighter myth in the 27 Club, but he keeps seeing the number 23, and he, oh, he finds this book, and it's, he's reading a story, and he turns out the stories about his life, and it's kind of, I think it's kind of this battle of how to whether he should read the end or not essentially mm -hmm. but it's really good I, it was the first like really serious role i'd seen him in and uh, he's just a genius i love jim carrey uh real quick uh they're doing a reunion like apparently they're for sure doing a reunion special yeah i saw that and i think i thought that I, I know it had gotten the green light and they were doing it and then i think covid hit so then i hadn't heard anything about it for a while yeah, so it says it was postponed indefinitely, and then apparently it's supposed to start filming fairly fairly soon. It was supposed to start in March, but I don't know if it actually did. That'll be interesting. I am a little bit worried about that, but we will definitely talk about it if it happens. Yeah. Oh, this is an embarrassing call out for Eleanor and I that I wanted to mention earlier. One year for Christmas, we got matching friends hoodies. Um, I don't have yeah, one in Ireland. I don't know if you have yours. I think mine's in Ireland, too. But, but they um, aren't the most them. comfortable hoodies. They're so good. We used to have a rule that if we, like, we never saw each other before we left to go to school. So the rule was whoever showed up first got to keep the outfit if we were wearing the same thing. We also have matching. <laughs> what else do we have matching? No, pants? Maybe we have matching yeah. pants. We got Scott. With. Well, we don't have matching pants. They're just, they're both, they're, they're different colors. But, yeah. yeah we so. have a couple different matching shirts. Um, oh, yes. One, one of time, which. I bought a shirt and then Eleanor showed up and then she had also bought the shirt the next day. So that was fun. That's fun um, the other things we have matching are through the school, so they're branded. So I think we get a little bit more leeway with that. But it, it is very embarrassing for us because sometimes we will show up or like having not seen each other 
in the whole day and then we'll show up to a meeting and be wearing the same thing and people think it's on purpose but it's worse that it's not yeah so yeah the rule is whoever shows up first um has to change you know whoever shows up second has to change oh yeah sorry whoever i don't know i never change. actually changed so yeah i don't think Kalina did either we just kind of dealt with we it kind of suffered but yeah like, well, it was there, fine because uh, Kalina got cold more often than I did, so I would usually take my top layer off, so it didn't look as bad, usually. Oh, my favorite story about me getting cold and Eleanor is we were giving um, campus tours to these kids in Tharlas, and then we had to introduce ourselves, and we were the society's officers, and I used to make a joke about our American accents just to... Because I know how to work a room, as Father Wall said. <laughs> so I walk up, and I, usually my joke was like, oh, yeah, and I'm from Florida, which is why I sound like this, da-da-da-da-da. And then one, so one time I went to give these tours, and it was, I was freezing that day. So I had on, I had on like, a long sleeve shirt, a tank top, my friend's hoodie, and then Eleanor gave me her jean jacket because she wasn't as cold as I was. So I was, like, bulked out to the max. Sorry, I'm standing here. So I walk up, and I was like, hi, I'm Kalina. Um, I'm from Florida. Um, which is why I'm dressed like this right now, and also why I sound like this. And I have. Please stop I using have a knife as a microphone. It's my bottle of nail polish remover. Um, so <laughs> this is why I'm dressed like this right now. So if I can find a photo, I'll put it. I have a photo of us on that day. I thought that was funny. Oh, Colleen and I also have matching parkas to Wait, deal okay, with Ireland. Because some people had a swim parka because they swim and play water polo, and then. Oh no! I like, definitely. Hey, that looks warm. I definitely stole her style on that one. She let me borrow it once, and then I was like, this is the height of luxury. I tell everyone, and they're like, oh, it looks comfy. I'm like, no, no, you gotta put this on. No, you don't understand. I wore that thing everywhere. So, I'm missing that a lot right now. I don't need it too much, but I'm missing it. It's nice. Okay, I think think we've exhausted all of our... No, we have to... We have our last article, which was about the outfits. Oh, Um, yeah. How could I forget? My top, and I'll put the photos in here if I remember. If not, use your imagination. Um, also, I closed the photos, so I can't describe them to you. But my favorites on this article were two, which I think was a Monica outfit. So um, number two is um, a Monica look. She had um, kind of a baseball tee. No, a ringer tee. Yeah. It's black, and then it had light gray here and then on the sleeves, and it was cropped. And then she was wearing... Um, wide leg pinstripe pants yeah they kind of remind me of my scotland pants the ones we, uh, that we have kind of match and then i like a ringer tee i do like a little cropped i love a little cropped little moment piece. so and i think monica just had like especially early seasons monica just had like really cute style mm-hmm. and she was a little bit more sporty which i could relate to more than um rachel and phoebe and then my other favorite was three and number three was um Phoebe in kind of a 60s ish oh, um, yeah. red. Well, maybe it's pink and white. She red or white or pink and white hospital. gingham dress. Yeah. Yeah, really cute. Uh, and then five was my third favorite, and I had an honorable mention as well. Um, And that's Rachel in a denim yeah. one piece doodad yeah. with a blazer. I stand by what I said. I like okay. I like denim. I'm a jean on jean lady. I didn't know jeans on jeans was something you weren't supposed to do until I went to Ireland. I think Eleanor told me one time I came out in it. Either that or I posted a photo on Instagram and one of my friends was like, ooh, jeans on jeans, fashion rebel. And I was like, I wear this all the time. Like, I always have on a <laughs> Kleena jean. Kleena does wear. Wear. Kleena can pull it off, but it not everyone good. can. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I didn't know it was a bad thing, so... Um, and then my honorable mention was 24, and the only reason it was an honorable <laughs> mention is because Rachel's, like, work outfit, but it was cute. Oh, yeah, 24 is my first one, just because she's wearing this, it looks like a dark blue velvet turtleneck yeah. with little buttons, and then the apron. I know it's her work apron, but it's got this, I think it's paisley yeah. and, like, and I yellow. Skirt, so I wasn't, I, like, I just wanted to be safe, so that was my honorable mention. I'll put the photos in. Um, I also really like 23 which is just Phoebe in white boots and then a black and white polka dot dress. Yeah. Um, I just love white boots. And Yeah, I didn't think about that one for a second. Um, my honorable mention is I really like any time Rachel isn't wearing a bra just because I think it's really fun to not wear a bra. Oh, my honorable mention, actually, my favorite is when they go play football on Thanksgiving with the boys, all the outfits the girls are wearing I think are great. 
I don't think it's in this article. If I if I can find it, I'll put that in too. Yeah. But like, I love that episode. I think it's so fun. I think anyway. I think the fashion choice is really good. I don't get the hullabaloo around the haircut Rachel had. No, I liked Monica, but, like the uh, um, outfit too, Monica. I like her hair. Mm-hmm. But my final thoughts back to what I said earlier is I don't think Friends was bad for its time. I think there were shows that like even at the time, like I've never seen Seinfeld, but what I've heard about it is even then it was kind of, eh, so it's worse now. Whereas Friends, I think definitely was in its pocket from the 90s. Mm-hmm. And is only kind of out of pocket now, but not by much. Yeah, I think there are a couple moments where it's really bad, but, like, if you take Ross out, it's a fine show. Yeah. And I think it gets a lot of flack just because so many people watch it. I think if mm-hmm. it wasn't such a, like, a, a, such a favorite, it, it probably wouldn't be scrutinized as much as it is. Yeah. But it's a good show. It's fun. You can put it on at any time, because mm-hmm. there's usually not a lot of background information you need to know besides... Uh, it's six white people in New York. <laughs> they know each other. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I yeah. like Friends. Um, again, hopefully we'll have our Friends hoodies reunited soon. And hopefully. Show you. That's the plan. I might actually have mine, but I'm not going to get up and look right now. I definitely don't have it. But, but it says Friends on it. It does. It's really cute. It's comfortable. Yeah, it's it's kind of like, it's got a nice crop where it's not like cropped, but also... It like hits right. I like when my clo- my shirt hits right where those my jeans start because I wear my jeans kind of high, and it hits mm-hmm. right at the top of my jeans. And anyway, thank I you. I have been Kalina, and I have been Eleanor, and, and this, this has been, been. Don't quote me on that. And next please time, please don't. Maybe we'll talk about a movie. Maybe. Hopefully, but you'll have to tune in to find out. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. One day we'll have outro music, but like, not today.